Let me give you the introduction before we go to the verses. Before I begin teaching on sexual bondages, this is a topic is not taught in church. Pastors maybe be afraid or I don't know, for some reason it's not taught. So we need to have some statistics that you will see in a minute. And there are some questions on sexual bondages I want you to, I want to answer. First of all, what is the origin of sex? What's the purpose of sex? What is the sexual, what is sexual immorality? What are the root causes of sexual bondages? Uh, what are the sexual perversions that we know? And what's the solution for those bondages? I'm going to teach this topic from the experience point of view and from the revelation and from the scriptures point of view. So in other words, um, I have the moral authority to teach it. And also I have the authority in the spirit to teach it. So when it comes to this, many pastors don't want to touch it because they themselves are having some issues. So when we come to this, let's start with the origin first. I'm not going to get into what sexual bondages are, but before let's go to the origin of sex. The Bible talks about a lot of sex. As a matter of fact, the Bible talks more about sex than anything else. Uh, because everything God created was good. That look, can you look for Genesis chapter 1? What it says, that verse, everything God was created was good. So you said that God created sex. In other words, sex is not sin. I want you to hear me because there's some um, uh, paradigms. There's some things in, in the mind of the people that they don't understand. And sometimes that's the reason um, sex is something bad. Well, the Bible created sex. It's not sin. It's not bad. Sex is, is good within marriage covenant. Within the law of God. Can I hear an amen on that? So God is the creator of, a sex, of sex to be within man, between, between a man and a woman. And within the marriage covenant. All sexual practices outside marriage in that context are sin. I'm going to say it again. All sexual practices outside marriage, marriage are sin. In other words, and there are entry points for demon powers to come in. What's the purpose of sex? I want you to see it. The origin of the original intention of God was for man and a woman to be attractive to one another. So God created them uh, to be intimate in a close relationship. So the consummation of that relationship, Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Uh, so the consummation, the consummation of, of that relationship between a man and a woman uh, ended up in sexual union and physical union. So the purpose of sex, I want you to write it down, is pleasure. God created, God gave sex to men for pleasure. Say with me, pleasure. So sex is not bad. When it's done within the parameters or the limits of, of marriage. So one of the purpose of sex is to bring pleasure. In other words, sex is good. Lift your hands and say, sex is good. Uh, some of them are still afraid to say it. I think that their wife... Come on, lift your hands and say, sex is good. See, those are the things we need to be uh, delivered from. Thinking that sex is horrible. Oh my God, it's horrible. And that's what you need to teach your children. Don't let education to teach your children. Let, let God, let the Bible. So the Bible is a book of sex. So you need to teach them. Before they do, you do it yourself. So God's design sex was to enjoy it within the marriage covenant. So we all the enemy brought or perverted. So if you have marriage, if you are married... Uh, you enjoy sex because that's what part of the plan of God is, is for pleasure. Save you with me for pleasure. Number two is for procreation. Procreation is the second purpose of marriage. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Any practice of sex outside marriage is curse. 
So it's cursed. Any practice of sex outside of the context of marriage is cursed. So, um, so he will always, the enemy will bring demons to uh, enter those places. When we give them any place, uh, when we have a relationship outside marriage. So it will always entry point for demons. So God says, go, be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish. So in other words, it's clear, it's for pleasure. So God says, everything God created was good. And number two, it was pro procreation. Say with me, procreation. Now, I'm going to get this, the simple, that's the basic for some people that have some ideas in their mind. And before you are set free, you will say, well, I don't know. Uh, you know, I feel that, you know, when having sex with my wife is, I'm sinning against God. You know, no. So I just want you to have the God's perspective on sex. You don't sound like you don't like sex. You sound like you, you sounds like you, you trouble, you sound. Like... So that's what the Bible, the Bible is a book of, it speaks a lot on sex. So there's two God created men and women with two strong desires. I want you to write it down. God gave each person an endowment or capacity uh, or a physical force which psychology, a psychologist called drives. Lift your hands and say it, drives. Again, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go to 11 o'clock. Everybody, lift your hands, come on. Okay, have a drive to say drive. <laughs> so, a God created somebody and gave the capacity or an endowment with drives. So, uh, what is a drive in our terms? Drive is our strong desire, is a strong appetite. That's what the Bible called, uh, in, in the negative side, lost spirit of lost so this part of we were made with a strong desire it is natural so god created you with a strong drive and there's two the strongest two drives number one there's a spiritual drive there's a strong desire the very shoki rabba. This is a strong desire. So this is a drive for spiritual things. This is a drive for people in the world. Call it religion. So God put us a drive to find spiritual drive to find fulfillment and a spiritual relationship. In other words, a person that doesn't have Christ. She or he is always looking for fulfillment, spiritual fulfillment. They're always looking for, especially the world. That's why they go after religions, false religions, because they have those drives. In other words, they thirsty for something spiritual. I wish I can hear an amen. Those that are watching by the internet. You also have drives. So there's a spiritual drive. So the, the word religion means to research for spiritual satisfaction. People are researching for spiritual fulfillment. And that's the reason they look for false God. Cults, false religion. So I want to mention something and I put this on announcement, public announcement. Those that are watching by the internet, keep connecting. Your spiritual satisfaction or fulfillment can only be found in Jesus Christ. Your spiritual satisfaction. If you have found Jesus, if you already know Jesus, and you're still unsatisfied, I don't think you are born again. Because... I don't need any other thing. I am fulfilled. I am happy. I am satisfied with Jesus. Somebody have to say amen. 
So everybody in Jesus, you must be fulfilled, must be complete, happy, because what were you looking for, you found it. It's Jesus. So that drive is already fulfilled. Now you go after him to know him more. Number two, the second drive is sexual drive. And that drive is a strong desire for sex. Sex drive is a compulsion to seek out a mate of the opposite sex. That's what sexual drive is. So man was created with the drive and desire. That is part of his makeup. Judges chapter 14 verse 1 and 2. The sex drive is designed by God to seek a physical pleasure and to reproduce offsprings. So in other words, the drive to have, to want to have sex is normal. God gave it to you. I didn't say you go and I say, okay, it's normal. I'm going to go with, no, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say within marriage. Okay, can I hear an amen, people? So it's, no, it's normal that sexual drive is natural. In other words, if you say, I have sex desires, you're not a sinner. <laughs> it's normal. <laughs> Don't feel guilty. So, but the enemy brought perversion, perverted that sexual drive and became lost, L-U-S-T. The lust of the flesh. So that perversion. And when that perversion comes. Is when the demons enter. You comprende? So I want you to see something very powerful. What are the two drives that God has given you? Only one lady. My cheerleader is not saying anything here. Okay, what are the true drives? Come on, lift your hands. Come on, say it. What is it? Okay. Are you satisfied in the spiritual drive? There's some people rather ready to repent. There's some Buddhists here. Okay, how many of you are satisfied in your spiritual drive? Because you have Jesus. Now, in the sexual drive, once you get married, you'll be satisfied. In the meantime, what do you do? Call showers. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and tell them, they're talking to you, neighbor. Come on. So I, I have seen the sexual immorality. Now we see the drives. Now we see the origin of sex. Before we get into sexual bondages, now we need to understand what is a sexual immorality. And what is sexual purity, if I can define both. So sexual immorality is a perversion uh, of sex. And this has, is one of the biggest issues in church. This is one of the biggest issue and problem in church. Some leaders, even those that are watching, are struggling privately. And they're struggling in silence with this issue. Some believers, the same thing. So all form of sexual relationship, which is not within marriage, secure and bound of marriage is illegal. So sex is primary spiritual before it's physical. I want you to understand that. Sex is primary spiritual. So when people enter into a, a sexual relationship, that is not God becomes sin. So the demonic take advantage of that and comes and they open the door for demons to come. So demonic, I want you to write this down. Demonic spirits are transferred through sexual intercourse. Demonic spirit are transferred through sexual intimacy. That is another one you need to put there. So we are exposed daily to sexual perversion 
in TV, social media, websites, magazines. We are living in an age that relatively is rare um, to see somebody. In other words, we see because we this exposure is every day. So I minister for 25 years and I always find people struggling in an area of, of immorality. Believers and non-believers. So I want you to see and understand certain things. And I want you to see a list. There's a list of, of sexual immoralities or sexual bondages. I want, you to, I want you to see. There's a list that I want you to see that so many people struggle with. Fornication. That is being married. Two persons having sex without being married. Many people said that it's not sin, but it's sin. Adultery, that's somebody having an affair outside marriage. Secure, uh, sequal, fantasies, what is that? Sexual fantasies. Homosexuality, bestiality, masturbation, molestation, rape, abuse, incest, abortion, um, promiscuity by choice, pornography, sexual activity, with deming, demons, not by demons. Sexual activity with women or men. Sadism. What else? So you see all these activities are illegal. Outside marriage. And every time a person practices one of those things. You will see a demon. There's a door for demons to come. So what are the causes? Now we understand, let me tell you, there's no one in this building that can say, Apostle, I don't have anything. I, I think I'm, I'm okay. So there's so many things happening and so many things that, so many consequences, shame, lost soul ties, uh, guilt, so many things. But before I, I these, are the, these are the branches. These are the branches. This, are, this is what I call the spider web. But we must deal with the web. These are the branches, but we must deal with the roots. You understand? So those are masturbation, fornication, those are branches. But we must go to deal with the roots. So this is what I'm going to tell you. What are the causes? Let's deal with the causes. We understand the origin, the purpose. Now, what are the causes? First of all, generational curses. One of the causes of those sexual immorality Um, perversions are generational curses transfer from one generation to another generation Proverbs 26 3 wherever there is a curse operating there is a cause have you seen any generational curse in your life can you look at me please have you seen any generational curse in your life yes, that you saw it in your grandparents yes, you saw it in your father and your mother yes, yes. in any area yes. that's a generation of curse yes.